Hello, everybody. Today, I am proud to announce the NEAR Retroactive Builders Round, sponsored by the NEAR Foundation and facilitated by BuildOut. Application period is over and the matching round begins. This means that donations to projects through the pod from verified humans, verified humans being you reach a certain score on not a bot. Um, the easiest way right now is through near social and Twitter verification. These verified humans, those donations are used to calculate how much of the 7,300 near matching pool is given to each project. And that 7,300 near is around 50,000 to 60,000 USD right now. So a lot on the table out of the 32 applications that came in, 30 projects were accepted on the grounds that they have built open source on near and they have not been properly compensated in the past. So this is an opportunity to, to, to give them those rewards, give them those incentives. And there is three weeks where this matching round is live. It ends on Sunday, 11.59 p.m. Eastern time on April 7th. So I'm gonna go cover basically all the projects and give a high level overview of everyone that's involved. So if you go to POTS and then you go to the retroactive builders round, you can see there are 21 days left in the round. There's also shows you how much is raised and then also how many donors and the estimated amount. So what quadratic funding is, is it incentivizes more unique donations than it does whales coming in. So if more people, if 100 people donated 0.1 to one project and 100 people donated uh, or one person donated a hundred dollars, that you know, hundred people donations would get more. But this doesn't mean that if you donate a hundred like dollars, it will de-incentivize. It just won't match as much as um with as much power as a smaller donation. But it would still give more of the matching than if you donate point one. Uh, so yeah, don't be disincentivized to donate a lot. Um, this is essentially a way for you to donate to projects that you love so that they can get more of the matching pool. It's kind of like in the government where they have one-to-one -one matching for tax write-offs if you're donating to your nonprofit. Similar like that, but the actual write-off, the actual amount compensated is based on more broader donations being incentivized with this estimated matching amount only meaning what it is for the st current state of donation to the pot. The actual amount will not be paid out or even calculated up until the end. This is just a way so you could see the impact when you donate one more, how much the number changes. But there's over 30 applications or 30 projects that have been accepted. You can see the applications or the admin notes in the application section. There's actually 33. So there's 31 projects, a lot of projects that I'm really fond of and so, yeah, we can see right here, the first project that applied was SDKs.near. Essentially, they're tools for devs to leverage um, and make easier, especially when building on BOSS. They're like the NPM of BOSS or the blockchain operating system. They basically abstract a lot of contract functionalities, package them up into BOSS-based modules so you can easily reuse those without constantly rewriting all the functions there. And this is something they helped us with in potluck so we can abstract our contracts, build them more composably, and just update the SDK on BOSS more so than updating all of our code base across all of our components. Uh, so yeah, shout out to SDKs.near for building. Then there's everything.dev. And what everything.dev is, it basically is on the forefront of upgrading the social VM. They have type systems on chain and modular and reusable components. They've built integrations like Live Pierre, TLD Draw. They've helped us with optimizing our code on the front end for Boss. So big shout out to everything.dev. You can see a lot of our code reviews uh, before uh, with Elliot, the founder there. Then there's magicbuild.near. What magicbuild.near is, it is a utility platform that help e users and even developers automatically generate front end code from smart contract addresses. So it's a low code, no code tool that you can use to basically create boss front ends just from a contract address. Automatically generates the ABI and the you know proposed methods or the perceived methods. And so they're a pretty awesome tool for starting development and they are still building. Then there's OPACT 
tickets for million dollars hide your cash and they are the first open source and zk application in production on near and essentially funding would go to audits and also marketing to get more liquidity on the platform uh, they are basically the first privacy mixer on near and to actually have a mixer work you need a lot of people using it so big shout out to them for that and they're a project i love and they've been very helpful for me in the past and then there is the near social bridge uh, this is a library that allows you to create a common application in React.js and build it inside of a boss component. Um, and also the same developer on here is developing a new framework called Alem that we're using at Potluck to basically make the latency of boss components quicker and the development environment more friendly. So shout out to Wenderson for building that. Then there is boss mobile, uh, which allows you to actually have a boss gateway render boss components inside of a mobile application in Flutter. This is something I'm really excited about for more native mobile experiences. And next project is Shardog. Uh, they've worked on onboarding, NFT minting, wallet creation. They're not open source, but they have onboarded a lot of the communities and been a public good in the sense that you can hit Shardog up and they will facilitate your mint. And they've also covered a lot of transaction cost and a lot of those funds will go towards this. And they've been doing this for almost what I feel like is two years now. Yeah. Then there's archetype.org. Um, and this is something I've been really excited about. Um, it's actually archetype.computer, but there's something I've really been excited about of using because um, they are basically infrastructure to help developers track and publishing and versioning of events, metadata and attestations, um, and they're upgrading to testnet pretty soon, but this will enable, enable us to basically see um, software dependencies and verify them and audit them down the pipeline. So really appreciate that and looking forward to using them for impact tracking on Potluck. And then there's Govinkaya. Uh, they're a security research firm specializing in Rust. They actually, to more from there, built the first near smart contract security course. And they actually gave us an audit and it was very helpful. The first person to audit Potluck and they've been doing a lot of work in the ecosystem and supporting projects. Um, and audits are a pretty expensive thing. So they've been definitely accommodating that so I would highly recommend that you support them. Then there's proof of vibes. You might be uh, wondering why is vibes in a builders round, um, but they're actually building open source Web3 social and boss integrations. They built it away for you to actually host your vibes into a social feed and also abstracted it through a Telegram wallet. Um, so yeah, they're abstracting the vibes outside of just throwing amazing events, which they did at Eat Denver for us with the potluck. Then there's near Badger. Essentially, they're a tool that currently empowers not a bot. So if you used Farcaster, if you used the Lens integration, the Twitter integration, um, it essentially allows you to verify your account to other third-party solutions and is fundamental for not only not a bot determining if you're a human, but in the future, uh, merging social graphs. So a whole bunch of other people can use this to build applications on top of, and they're coming out with new authentication services like uh, Google, GitHub, et cetera. Um, and they're leveraging the near social DB. So this is based on decentralized front ends and anyone could use composably. Then there's hyperfiles and um, their tagline is organized everything. Uh, they're essentially an on-chain knowledge graph. Um, that's especially focused on DeSci, uh, but they're building on-chain impact evaluation, something that we're going to be using in the impact tab of Potluck to basically track attestations, whether people have been impacted by a piece of software, public good, etc. And yeah, they've been working with also OpenCAN and then everything.dev and building on top of their type system. Potluck bot near, you might be getting notifications on Twitter that someone has donated this amount or you have their new Telegram bot. But uh, essentially what this is, is it is a way to notify people that stuff is happening on chain pertaining to Potluck. And it's been absolutely helpful because we can't push notifications directly to people. There isn't a streamlined way to let people know and engage them on social media. So big shout out to them. They built their own indexer and they're, um, they've been upgrading this tool. Um, and it's been amazing and pretty receptive by a lot of our users. 
Then there's Shih Tzu. Um, they were one of the first meme coins on Aurora. They recently migrated to Nier, and they're building Shih Tzu Ape, which is essentially the first and only project uh, that is actually letting you launch tokens permissionlessly on Nier. After Skyward.Binance got its exploit, there hasn't been a tool like this. So they're essentially building all of that, and they're actually using uh, Aurora to Nier's SDK for their migration, which is pretty innovative for a meme coin. So big shout out to the team over there. Um, Near Chan got rejected. They hadn't really built too much open source technology that they could prove, so they didn't make it this round, but big shout out to them. There's also WebAssembly Music, which is an early, early project, but essentially allows you to create music using JavaScript and assembly script code. Um, it's pretty, pretty, pretty technical and pretty creative as well. Uh, but, uh, yeah, there's also Wasm Git, which I'll go into in a second, in JS Rust, which uh, Peter Solomon also built. New Catalog, they're literally a project that came out of an ecosystem need, and they should be rewarded retroactively. Uh, what they are is they are Nier's ecosystem map. I did a lot of work to curate a lot of projects and do diligence for it. They're completely built on BOSS. And they've been uh, killing it in terms of keeping track of the ecosystem. This is exactly what we need. They're built all on open source and they have a lot of contributors there. So please support them. There's Forefront Talks. They're an analytics platform on Boss um, that uses different data sources. They're actually providing insights on Potluck for donor retention, understanding POTS, understanding Nanobot. They're, they're pretty instrumental in not only allowing us to understand what's going on chain, but other applications as well. They've been pretty active on Twitter showing their features and their analytics. So big shout out to them. They've really helped me with insights on what's going on in Potluck. And then there's Friendsly, which is essentially a social platform that connects different social graphs like Les and Farcaster into one place. And this leverages near Badger, not a bot, and the connections made there to actually index this all in one place. Uh, we're tired of making a lens, making a near social, making a Farcaster go to different applications. Friendsly combines that all together. And we're hoping to use that onto donor profiles and project profiles uh, to build a more chain abstract and the multi-chain experience. So shout out to the Friendsly team. Um, and a sister that, that AI, uh, they, they they recently did some hackathons. They are building an open source incentive driven framework uh, to uh, contribute to basically incentivize the community to answer questions like Stack Exchange. Um, so they're essentially kind of like a co-pilot for Nier, uh, but yeah, shout out to them. Um, also we'll be seeing them in the AI round. Uh, com components, components library is a library made by Monza. Um, one of the earliest developers on Boss it essentially was an onboarding solution for devs to easily reuse and find components. It's something that I use. It's something a lot of early members of BuildDAO use to more rapidly develop because search wasn't necessarily there. Nira Knight did not make it in this round uh, because they don't have much open source uh, building going on, but for future rounds, we would love to include them. Um, and But Nico did. They recently just open sourced their airdrop tool. Uh, they are a content creation based community and one of the only meme coin communities standing around before the meme coin jetter renaissance or um, I mean renaissance came um, into play. Um, and so, yeah, big shout out to them. They specifically open source to qualify for that round. If you want to qualify for future funding, open source, more of the community will contribute. And yeah, so Wasm Git, another project by Peter Solomon, it essentially allows you to turn your um, you know, web application into a Git client, a via Wasm, and it uses a near smart contract to uh, as access control to a Git server. So it's kind of like an odd shade Git. There's also Questverse, uh, which is standardizing the process of creating and deploying on shade quest. Uh, it uses query API indexer. Um, this is a project that needs more contributors. So if you're looking to build out more on-chain quest, um, definitely not only join the team, but donate as well. Multi-call is a DAO tool for executing proposals with multiple actions. So I can donate to Potluck and donate to a pot and verify it's not about as a DAO. I don't know why you do that, but you could essentially build that type of flow out with multi-call. And it is an early tool for OGs in the near ecosystem. Nearverse built things like humans on near. They built uh, like raffling tools. They built socializer. They built a lot of tools on near. 
Um, and big shout out to them. They were heavily involved in the NFT ecosystem and been around. So there are labs that's been building a lot of open source and public goods. JSON Rust basically allows you to use a Rust contract on near to uh with JavaScript code. It's like it's it's kind of like boss, but built where you have your own contracts and it leverages web for honestly, it's way over my head, but this is something I'm really excited about to use for potluck for kind of single page donation applications that live as, as, as its own smart contract. Speaking of what is being used at Potluck, Boss Workspace is a local workspace for Boss development. This is how any large team that's working on the blockchain operating system, working on these decentralized front ends, are able to collaborate, run stuff locally, deploy things on testnet, um, do a, a familiar environment like GitHub. And this is what we use. Without this, we wouldn't be able to build a large scale application on Boss. So big shout out to the Boss Workspace team for continuing to innovate. And this actually came as a need for the development of NDC tooling like Astra++, um, but has evolved into kind of the go-to framework for teams building on Boss. Micro AGI, this is made by Microchip GNU, uh, the CTO at Mintbase. And essentially um, all the funds are gonna be put towards bounties to improve the code. So donate to this if you want to contribute and you want incentives later. It's pretty regenerative in that sense, uh, but it is democratizing AI tooling for the web and boss developers. It integrates a near autonomous uh, wallet um, to basically pay those AI agents and deploy these AI agents um, in there. So yep, near is AI, and this is the open source framework for doing that. Also kind of going off of the wallet, uh, Microchip GNU has built things like the near Meta Transactions Next.js Relayer, uh, which was you know the, the predecessor to Mintbase Wallet, a lot of projects that use Meta Transactions. Um, and so outside of the time of Mintbase, he's building a lot of core tooling to help us build easier. So I highly recommend you support that. And then there's Flutter Chain, which uh, creates a near API for Flutter developers. It allows you to easily create a Flutter application and interact with near versus the boss mobile, which actually renders the code in the VM, this makes it easier for you to interact with on-chain um, and on different wallets, which is pretty hard. A lot of people who are building mobile applications tend to build their own wallet. So this is essentially an open source starter kit for building your own mobile app location that interacts with your blockchain. And so 10K DAO or Tank DAO, um, they're essentially one of the first NFT accelerators they uh, were facilitating the top five launch pads. They're really OG in the space. Uh, if you launch that NFT collection in a day, you are a part of the lineage of 10K DAO. They were that instrumental for generative collections. Um, so yeah, m like if you read this, uh, it actually spearheaded DAO adoption um, and there was the DAO incubator. There is a whole kind of lineage of NFT collections and DAOs that you guys probably don't know about, but they deserve their flowers and they're just dues. And so please support them. Starpause was involved with this, but yeah, a lot of people who use these NFTs today are affected by 10K DAO. And then there's Wormhole. Um, they launched a boss component to sync users tweets to boss and near social. So they connect your Twitter to, to near social and then it detects, it basically gives delegated access to post a good reply um, to their kind of relayer and essentially, whenever you use the hashtag boss, and you'll see most of the feed uses hashtag boss because most of the feed actually comes from Twitter who uses hashtag boss and then it posts um, on your behalf using this kind of delegated access. And they actually have a huge Twitter bill. I don't think they've been fairly compensated. And from what I heard, like their Twitter bill can cost over 5K a month. This is what we use at Potluck to post to boss if you ever see our feed. Um, this is what a lot of teams use. So big shout out to them. They definitely deserve retroactive funding. They didn't do this as a grant. They did this because they saw a market need and they just built it. Um, and so this is something we've been using for a while now. So big shout out to all the teams, a lot of projects I've been using, a lot of projects I'm excited to work with, a lot of projects that I want to integrate and see others people to build. So this is not just about funding. This is about discovery of the builders who need your help. Um, and yeah, you just go to the projects tab and you can donate directly. Uh, right now, can't really donate up until I log in and then I verify. But if you click fund matching pool, this will actually go towards the matching funds available. It won't go to the project. But if you click donate here and you're a verified human, that means you went to Nadabod 
and then you got over the human threshold score by verifying stamps. The easiest right now is completing your social and also verifying your Twitter and you're a human, then you could basically uh, donate to a project in the pot and then get these match donations. These estimated amounts are not finalized, uh, essentially gamifying how these pots get allocated. And you can learn more about quadratic funding in the description. So an exciting set of projects. Every time you refresh this, by the way, for fairness, this will reshuffle. That's why the applications are kind of the best indicator to see about lineage. And yeah, really excited to kick this off. And let me know if you have any questions at potluck.org slash community. So 